Well, it's another week and another security warning with something you have to do to protect your computers and your network, but that's just the state that we live in today with technology. You have to be proactive with these things. And this time, there is a pretty major malware bug going around infecting home routers. And actually, this one's so serious that the FBI issued a statement, and they said that about 500,000 routers around the world were infected by this and potentially you as well. So we're going to go over what this infection is and why you really need to take it seriously, what you can do to stop it in the future and potentially fix it if you are infected. Now the name of this malware is called VPN filter and it's believed that it could be state sponsored by the government of Russia. So that's kind of a big deal. And like I said, it's affected hundreds of thousands of routers. And what it does is basically embeds itself into your router, firmware or software, and then it will call home and then install more malware onto it that can do things like spy on information coming in and out of your router, shut down the router completely, do all sorts of commands like become part of a botnet to take down services, all sorts of nasty stuff that you don't want to deal with. And for a while, up until it was discovered, it was kind of just sitting there silently spreading. So the main theory is that it's just kind of accumulating as quietly as it can and then would be used as a botnet to all attack at once something. And it apparently doesn't target all types of routers. There is certain manufacturers that it targets which are very popular, and those are Linksys, Microtik, Netgear, TP-Link, and even QNAP NAS servers. So that's kind of different than the other routers. And also here is a list of known specific models of routers that have been affected. I'm not 100% sure if that's believed to be the only ones that can be affected, but if you're on that list, you definitely need to pay attention. If you're not on that list, uh, maybe keep an eye out, out still and still follow the directions I'm gonna talk about in a second. So what do you have to do? First, let's go over the steps you need to take and then I'll explain why you need to do all these things if they don't make sense in a second. So the first thing you need to do is reboot your router. And by that, I mean like unplug it, for about 30 seconds or so. Probably not that long is necessary, but just to be safe, and that will clear out any of the short-term RAM, memory, and all that stuff that may be loaded by the malware, and then after that 30 seconds or so, you can plug it back in. The next big thing you need to do is make sure your router firmware is up to date. You may need to update it manually if it's not a very recent router that has automatic updates installed because this malware specifically was targeting older firmwares that had these exploits. So if you have been keeping your router up to date, you shouldn't have to worry too much. A couple other things you should do in any case, no matter what kind of router you have, is change the default administrative password in your router settings. So that should be under security settings or administrator settings. You're gonna have to look up the instructions for your specific router. And that will basically allow it so anyone who connects to your network can't just go into your router settings and change whatever they want because usually the default password is literally just password or admin or something like that. And you'll also want to disable remote management if your router has that setting in there. So not all routers will have this even as a possibility. I know that my Linksys router doesn't have that if you set it up manually without their smart Linksys thing, account, whatever. So you might want to go in there and check to see if that's a possibility and disable it if you can. Now, if your router was not on that list of specific models I mentioned before, if you follow those steps, you should be okay. But if your model was on that list, then listen up because that malware, if you were infected, even after doing all those things, may not be gone because it actually embeds into the firmware so that even if you reboot the router, it'll become less effective and much less of a risk, but it's still there. Because there's actually three stages to this malware. So the first one is, again, when it embeds into the firmware, and then the second stage and the third stage is when it kind of wakes up even after a reboot, because it's still there. And then on the second stage, it'll send out a signal to call home, and then it will try to download a payload, which is like more malware that actually does a lot more of the infecting. And then the third stage is when it waits for commands. Now, the reason that rebooting helps is because the FBI actually took control of the domain that was being used as the call home signal. 
So basically what happens now, even if you are infected, once you reboot the router, what will happen is it'll wipe out the second and third stage, so all the real malware, but the initial stage that kind of installs itself will still be there, but when you reboot it, it won't be able to download any of that malware because the domain where it's hosted is gone. But that doesn't mean that you're safe because even though the infection is dormant and it may not actively be spying on you at the moment if it was before, here's the thing. Part of the malware's programming is if it can't contact that call home domain, then it sets up a listener on your router that waits for instructions from a direct connection. So your router still could be theoretically controlled if that router maybe had called home before and then those hackers made a list of all the routers that were infected. So even if it was rebooted and it can't call home, they still know that your router has been infected. So what you need to do to completely get rid of this is do a factory reset on your router. So usually that involves holding down a reset button on the back for like 10 seconds and you're gonna have to set everything up again. And I would especially 100% do this if you are on that list of specific models that are infected because there's really no way to know if you are infected so you don't wanna risk it. If your router model isn't on that list, it's kind of up to you whether you wanna take that risk. I mean, if it's a more recent router and you know you've been keeping up to date or you go into the router settings and see that automatic firmware updates are enabled, then you know that you probably are safe. So in that case, you're probably fine. But again, you may wanna just do it anyway if you don't wanna take that risk. So I think that's the basics of it. Just wanted to quickly go over what this malware was, why you should take it seriously, and what you need to do again to fix it. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. You can let us know down in the comments what you think. Did you have this router? Have you noticed anything weird going on with it? And we could talk about that down there. If you wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can just click on those. And if you wanna subscribe, I make a couple new videos every week, so it should be worth it. So thanks again for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.